<coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our hadith class. We are doing the kitab known as Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam al-Nabawi rahimahullah and tonight <coughs> Tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we are continuing on where we had left off. If you can recall, last time, two weeks ago, we began the chapter of Amr bin Ma'aruf and Nahi anil Munkar, and we read the ayat and two of the hadith. So tonight, inshallah, we're starting from the third hadith of this chapter. So let us begin. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So the 187th hadith so far, الثالث the third hadith of this chapter عن أبي الوليد عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله عنه أذرة عبادة بن الصامت رضي الله عنه فإن مسل نوهم by his real name his kunya was أذرة أبو الوليد رضي الله عنه he said قال بايعنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على السمع والطاعة في العسر واليسر والمنشط والمكره وعلى أثرة علينا وعلى ألا ننازع الأمر أهلا إلا أن تروا كفرا بواحا عندكم من الله تعالى فيه برهان وعلى أن نقول بالحق أينما كنا لا نخاف في الله اللوم تلائم متفق عليه the wordings of this hadith, the wordings of this hadith is such that when people give the bay'ah to the khalifa uh, then these are the words that they use in fact and so just let me read the hadith first and then we can look at a bit of the hadith itself. So Hadrat Ubada ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, he said that when we took the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the pledge of allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made upon the following. Ala sam'i wa ta'a, to hear and obey. The Khalifa says something, and obviously Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is above any Khalifa. But in the case of a Khalifa, ala sam'i wa ta'a. If he says we yearn and we obey, if he says something, we obey him. Obviously, in things of goodness. And then he, he goes further, fil usri wal yusr, in difficulty and ease, meaning whether we are having good times or bad times, that does not change the fact that we are commanded to obey the ruler. The, and the ruler refers to the Khalifa, not to the president, not to a kafir, not to people of the sort, to the Khalifa that is the uh, sultan of the fil ard. You know, the, that uh, Khalifa that rules over the entire Muslim world, that Khalifa is being spoken about. No other ruler is accepted as far as the deen is concerned. Yeah, you have the sultan uh, who is under the Khalifa, you know, you can have a little... You had many dynasties. You had the Seljuks in, during the ages of, of old, the Ayyubid dynasty, the Seljuks, and all these type of people who were Salatin, plural of the word Sultan. They were a Sultan. So he had his people that were under him and stuff like this here, but all of them fall under the Khalifa. They are not a freestanding uh, ruler in and of his own self. So in ease and difficulty like we were saying whether you are having whether he commands you with something that you like or you dislike you know for example if he tells you this is what must be done that must must not be done and it is something which is acceptable in the sharia you are required to obey him if he tells you for example uh all the men must now for example shave their hair now you don't want to shave your hair the Islam, islamically there's no harm in it Maybe because he feels, for example, uh, people are now going the way of fades and stuff of the sort. So by the rule of the Khalifa, everybody will have shaved heads, for example. Then the people are required to obey him. So that's how a feeling usri will use And this is the mildest form. It goes much further. Hence why usr difficulty. It is hard. Not just something as light as, you know, uh, cutting your hair off. We're talking here that it puts you through problems and difficulties. Even then you are required to obey and follow the command. You know, whether you like or dislike it, whether it is easy upon you or difficult upon you, whether it goes, whether it gels with you or goes against your grain, you don't have a choice in the matter. Where, you know, it is a case, the Khalifa is given the command and you are required to uh, obey. وعلى أثرة علينا. And the next part of the bay'ah is وعلى أثرة علينا. We give the bay'ah despite the fact that others will have 
give, be given precedence over us, in other words. In the context of the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, they were, they were ranks amongst the Sahaba, the Badri companions, you know, and so on and so forth. Sabiqun al-awwalun, those who were the first to accept Islam and things of this sort. But nonetheless, so after the time of the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum as well, you may be in a situation where you are in a khilafa, you are more knowledgeable, you are more capable, but somebody else is given the position and things like this here. You once again, you listen and you obey. وَعَلَىٰ أَلَّا نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرَ أَهْلَىٰ Meaning that this part of the bay'ah means that we will not argue with the, you know, نُنَازِعَ uh, نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرَ أَهْلَىٰ Or at least in this case here, uh, we will not remove the khalifa from his position. إِلَّا أَن تَرَوْ كُفْرًا بَوَاحَ Except if you see clear kufr from him. عِنْدَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ فِيهِ بُرْحَان Which you have proof from Allah Ta'ala, uh, uh, a clear proof from Allah Ta'ala regarding it. Then you get rid of him. So from a point of, uh, uh, just to put again things into its perspective, once again to clarify over and over, the presidents and people of this sort do not fall under this category. You have people, the Madkhalis of this world who worship the Saudi rulers and they say you are required to obey the ruler. They are not speaking from Islam. They are misusing a hadith to take a hadith regarding the Khilafah and apply it to a kafir like MBS and the, the Saudi rulers. There is no a way on earth these hadith apply to a kuffar of that nature. Even if they weren't kuffar, let's assume that they weren't kuffar, even then it doesn't apply to them. It applies to the khalifa, not to some king or some ruler or some president and things of the sort. Khalifa, no one else. So when you have a khalifa, the duty of the Muslim is to listen and to obey the khalifa while he is commanding them with, number one, with goodness, or two things which are permissible. When he commands people to do things which are wrong, then it is wajib to uh, disobey him. You are not permitted to obey the Khalifa if he tells you, for example, we're having a World Cup now, you know, for of soccer and things, everybody must come and attend. It is wajib for you to disobey him. Why? Because he's calling you towards evil. So in this case here, you may not obey him, despite the rank that the Sharia has given him as being there on top. But we have the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق. There is no obedience to the creation which results in disobedience to the creator. So, you know, uh, when it comes to, uh, in, even another hadith mentions that you are required to obey your ruler even if he takes your wealth and beats you, uh, you know, like uh, uh, whoops your back as the narration mentioned. The point being that even if he is oppressive, as long as he is a Muslim and he is uh, uh, ruling by the Sharia, he's calling people to Islam, even if he's got a bit of tyranny inside him, you are required to obey him. When this changes and you see kufran bawaha, you see open kufr, because, you know, he's like, he wants to bring back idols, he wants to... Uh, uh, change the Quran, change the Ahadith, change the books of Islam to bring a version that is fitting their lifestyle. It must, uh, you know, this the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't fit with them, so it must go. Things of this sort. When you find a person being an enemy of Islam, then if he was a Khalifa, you rebel against him. If he's not a, uh, a Khalifa, then you know much more higher you get rid of such uh, good for nothing things. Any case, the final part of the hadith he said, of the bay'ah was وَعَلَىٰ أَن نَقُولَ بِالْحَقِّ أَيْنَ مَا كُنَّا And we took the, the pledge of allegiance that we will speak the truth wherever we are. لَا نَخَافُ فِي اللَّهِ اللَّوْمَ تَلَائِمْ We will not fear uh, the blame of the blamers. For the sake of Allah, we will not be worried about the blame of the blamers. Today, unfortunately, we live in that situation where people fear the, what will people say? You know, if I'm going to speak what the haq is, you know, what are the people going to say about me? The reality of the situation is that it is not something which is up for negotiation. If the Sharia has said no, then it's no. So, you know, 
now you're gonna come no i can't say it but you know people are gonna call me extreme and, and no it don't work that way so wherever we are if we see injustice we are and this is how it fits to the chapter amr bil ma'ruf nahi anil munkar so when we see the evil taking place we have to speak out we have to speak up we have to stand up for the truth we cannot fear the the what people are going to say and somebody's going to come and point fingers and say hey if that man there you know it, you don't worry about such things you fear allah nobody else Muttafaqun alayh, this hadith is agreed upon and narrated both by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, rahimahumallah. Let's move on to the next uh, hadith, uh, hadith number 188. Al-Rabi'u anil Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu anhuma. The fourth hadith is reported by, by Adrat Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu anhuma. He said, anil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, mathalu al-qa'imi fi hududillah wal-waqi'i fiha. كَمَثَلِ قَوْمٍ إِسْتَهَمُوا عَلَى سَفِينَةٍ So in this hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us a parable, so to speak. Uh, a picture is being painted for us. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَثَلُ الْقَائِمِ فِي حُلُودِ اللَّهِ The example of the one who, who lives within the, the boundaries, that he, you know, he doesn't uh, exceed the boundaries that Allah has put down. وَالْوَاقِعِ فِيهَا And the one who exceeds the boundaries of the Sharia. So you have two types of people. The one who obeys the commands of Allah and the one who disobeys the commands of Allah. Who are they like? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the example is like كَمَثَلِ قَوْمٍ إِسْتَهَمُوا عَلَى سَفِينَةٍ Like they are like a group of people who had, you know, إِسْتَهَمُوا is like uh, سَهَم not here, uh, meaning arrows but you know people would like cast lots to get onto a ship. Yeah, let's call it to, that's the way people bought tickets for a ship. So everybody's on the boat now. So the boat has two levels, top level and bottom level. So some got uh, a view and others are under, you know, uh, underground. So they don't, uh, not underground, but on the bottom level in the basement, so to speak. So they don't see the you know they are in the bottom the food and everything nice is on the top so whenever they gotta come they gotta come up to, to you know for example to the top because that's where everything is so yeah so when the bottom ones when they uh, require water you know then they go uh, uh, to those uh, on the top floor and they say you know they now they tell them you know if we go and we make a hole uh, uh, you, you will remember this word from uh, Surah Kahf you read it on a, on a Friday the uh, uh, Khizr alayhi salam kharaqa litughriqa ahlaha akharaqtaha litughriqa ahlaha naqad jaita shay you know that hadith Musa alayhi salam and hadith Khizr kharaqtaha is the word kharaqa over here which means to make a hole so they say you know if we make a hole in our part of the boat you know now we have to go on top and get the water over there we have water right here i mean we floating on the water we just have to make a hole in the boat and we can get some water over here you know, uh, previously they have to go up to the top, maybe throw a bucket into the ocean and pull some water if they want it. Maybe they want to bath with the water, whatever. So they must go and do it that way. But now they say, hey, you know what? We're using our um, brains, non-existent brains, but nonetheless. So they say, let's make a hole in the boat here in the bottom. And then we won't, you know, we won't cause that leaf for the people on top. We won't have to come through. You know, they have the tickets for on top. We got the bottom uh, tickets over here. Now we keep coming through, up and down, trooping through the place there. Let's rather just make a hole here in the bottom. And then those on top, they won't have any issues from us. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِن تَرَكُوهُمْ وَمَا أَرَادُوا هَلَكُوا جَمِيعًا If the people on top, Leave them and what they intend to leave these people on the bottom and what these people on the bottom intend to do. Halaku jamia, all of them will die. Wa in ala aidihim. But if they grab hold of their hands, najaw wa najaw jamia, 
then the, the people on top would be safe and the people at the bottom and everybody, meaning the people at the bottom, the people on top, everyone will be safe. In other words, when he makes a hole in the boat, the boat is going to sink. He's, uh, you know, he's foolish. He thinks, let me make a hole here in the boat and then I can uh, get uh, water straight away. But he don't realize when he makes a hole, the ship gets the water, not just the little bit that you want. So, the people on top, they now have to come and step in and stop him by force and say, ah, you can't do this. You can come up, take your water here, whatever you want to do, but you are not going to make a hole in this boat. We're all going to die if the boat sinks. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is basically giving the example over here to say what? Which is the fact that when evil is taking place, it's not enough for you to be like, well, it doesn't, it, it's not my baby, not my baby. I don't have to worry about it. Not my monkeys, not my circus. You know, it don't work that way. If the people are committing evil and sin, you can't sit in your house like some hermit monk over there and think, hey, it's all good. It doesn't work that way. Sin and evil affect the community. It affects the houses around. It affects the livelihood of the people. It is because of the sons of the people that the rain is kept away. It is the sons of the people that uh, uh, corruption takes place on the land. It is the sons of the people that famine and things take place. It is the sons of the people that the fruit has no uh, 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 you know, proper taste to it. All of these things are the minute things in reality compared to the uh, great deal of uh, evils that come about as the result of sin you know uh, poverty is uh, people are affected by poverty on account of the sins that people do so you can't just sit in your house and say hey i'm my own island over here it doesn't work that way you have to do your nahi anil munkar so when people are committing evil in society it is your duty to step up and say you cannot do this you take hold of his hand and you say we're not going to allow you to do this because i mean let's put it practically this way if it was a, if you were literally on a ship and somebody was, was trying to do this you'd even hit him because you'd be like i can't swim if this ship goes down i'm going to drown i'm going to die so to protect my life i'm not going to allow him to do it so in a like manner today people have this love and let love uh, mentality if people want to have zina let them have zina if they women don't want to wear hijab it's their choice if people want to uh, uh, you know uh, play music blaring from the cars down the street it's their choice it doesn't work this way when you allow this to take place and you don't do anything about it you you are part and parcel of the problem because you are not doing anything to prevent this taking place. Thus, the evils set in. So if you're finding the rain is not coming, I'm making dua and the rain don't come, I perform all my salah, I fast always, I pay my zakah, I still give sadaqah, you know, I do everything, I stay away from harming people and everything. And I make dua and, you know, oh Allah send us the rain, send us the rain and no rain comes. It's because of the evils of the people there that causes the rain to be kept back. You know, things, many, many things of the sort. The evil will come if you are not doing Nahi Anil Munkar. So as long as people are doing Nahi Anil Munkar, then Allah will not cause the uh, calamities to befall the people if you are doing your Nahi Anil Munkar, because Allah knows that you are doing it. But if you are not going to do it, because, ah, what does it matter? Then you cannot blame anybody when the calamity is before you. So Imam Bukhari rahimahullah is the narrator of this hadith. So Imam Al-Nawawi now explains this. Al-Qa'imu fi hurud Allah ta'ala ma'anahu al-munkiru laha. Al-Qa'imu fi daf'iha wa izalatiha. Wal-muradu bil hurud ma'anaha Allahu anhu istahamu iqtara'u. So he explains Al-Qa'imu fi hurud Allah. The meaning of the one of... Uh, that a sentence I just read now, it means the one who st uh, he exists within the boundaries of the Sharia. He doesn't exceed the boundaries. And he stands also as a doorman to protect the boundaries of the Sharia from being transgressed. So he himself don't transgress it and he prevent others from transgressing it. That is the Qa'im fi hurudillah. And... Uh, as far as hudud is concerned, here yeah, we're not talking about hudud as in the prescribed punishments, but we're talking about the hudud as in the prohibitions that Allah has placed down, that you prevent people 
from those things which Allah has prohibited. And the last word, istahamu, I explained it earlier, which was to cast lots. Iqtara'u means you cast lots. I gave the example in our terms today, we don't cast lots. We go and we buy a ticket and you get on your boat. But in any case, that is that uh, hadith. Okay, let's move on to the next hadith. We've got a little bit of time left, five minutes. Maybe we can do a bit of a lengthy hadith. But okay, let's see how far we go. Uh, hadith number 189, Al-Khamis, with the fifth hadith of this chapter. An Ummi al-Mu'mineen, Ummi Salama, radiyallahu anha, Hind binti Abi Umayya, radiyallahu anha. Umm al-Mu'mineen, Hadrat Ummi Salama, radiyallahu anha. We all know, we should all know the name of one of the mothers of the believers, Hadrat Ummi Salama radiyallahu anha. But as you can tell here, her real name was Hadrat Bihind binti Abi Umayya. So sometimes people only know uh, the kunya of Ummi Salama radiyallahu anha, but the real name of Hadrat Ummi Salama radiyallahu anha was Hind binti Abi Umayya. رضي الله عنها عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال هذا أم سلمة رضي الله عنها شيء نريت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد إنه يستعمل عليكم أمراء فتعرفون وتنكرون فمن كره فقد برئ ومن أنكر فقد سلم ولكن من رضي رضي وتابع قالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا نقاتلهم قال لا ما أقام فيكم الصلاة We've still got a long way to go for this chapter. So anyway, Hadrat Umi Salama radiyallahu anha, she said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, innahu yusta'amalu alaykum umara, that rulers will be placed over you. Fata'arifuna wa tunkirun. You will see things that are good that you will approve of and things that are bad that you will disapprove of. Faman kariha faqad bari'a. The one who disapproves of it, then he will be, if you know, he is safe, he is free. He is free of blame, in other words. وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ فَقَدْ سَلِمَ The one who uh, the one who dislikes it, he is free of blame. وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ فَقَدْ سَلِمَ And the one who condemns the evil, then he is uh, he is safe. The one is free of blame, the other one is safe. So he's on a better level. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ رَضِيَ وَتَابَعَ But however, the one who is pleased and he follows it, meaning the evils are taking place, and you follow it. You are pleased with it. And we see this, as you can see, uh, uh, in Saudi today, the Kafir MBS, he can come out and he can say uh, Christmas and Halloween and, uh, you know, all things of the sort. And the people rush headlong. They are pleased with it. They, uh, you know, they follow every evil he brings in. You find the, the streets laden with people women not wearing any uh, uh, vestige of hijab, every last vestige of a hijab is gone. The uh, zina is taking place. There's nightclubs all over. There's the concerts taking place. And there are tens of thousands of them who are pleased with it and follow it. And they are the losers in this world and in the year after. So, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, قالوا يا أوتيذة the sahaba رضي الله عنه they said, يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا نقاتلهم that يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم shouldn't we fight these people and the, the, these rulers? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قال لا ما أقاموا فيكم الصلاة No, not as long as they continue to establish salah amongst you. Imam Muslim rahimahu Allah narrates this hadith. So once again, to clarify this point over here, two things. Number one, this hadith applies to the Khalifa. That's number one. Number two is that this is not referring to kufr uh, being uh, propagated and promoted all over and things of the sort. It's referring to evils and corruption, things of the sort here. Yeah? So, you know, yeah, you know, this theft taking place, they opening uh, doors of evil, zina, you know, maybe for example, not, uh, I shouldn't exactly use the word opening doors or as in instituting laws but it's like 
they don't they have a no care policy so if people are committing zina in the street ah it's one of those things so you see the evil you dislike it in your heart then bare minimum you have uh, you know you've done the bare minimum and you are free of blame if you take it a step further and you prevent it you stop it in whichever way you are can then you are safe you know you're in a good position so that, that's as far as that point is concerned and as far as when the person falls into kufr then it's a different story when you have a kafir ruler and uh, or at least a khalifa who's become a kafir it's a different story if you have a president or a king who's become a kafir hey kick him out throw him in the dustbin Imam Muslim rahimahullah narrates this hadith. Uh, Imam Nabawi rahimahullah goes on. He says, "Ma'anahu man kariha bi qalbihi, wa lam yastati in karam bi yadin, wa la lisanin, faqad bari'a min al ism, wa adda wa wazifatahu, wa man ankara bi hasab itaqatihi, faqad salima min hadhi al ma'asiya, wa man radiya bi fi'alihim wa tabaghum, fahuwa fahuwa al aasi lillah." Imam Nawawi says that, explaining the hadith, he says the meaning of the hadith is that man kariha bi qalbihi, he who dislikes the evil in his heart, walam yistati inkaran bi yadin wala lisan, and he has no capability of, uh, you know, condemning or stopping it by his tongue or by his hand, then faqad bari amin al ism, then at the very least, you know, he hates it in his heart and he's uh, free from sin, wa adda wa zifatahu, and he's done what he's you know, at least he done his duty to at least hate it in his heart. Woman ankara bi hasabi taqatihi. But as for the one who stops the evil according to the level of his capability, if you are in a cap, uh, if you are a cripple over there, you obviously you can't uh, help yourself. Where can you still uh, physically go and stop somebody else? So bi bi hasabi taqatihi according to the level of your capability, then faqad salima min hadhi al maasiya then you are totally free and safe. Uh, you will be, you know, the salima means safe. So you will, will be f- f- uh, safe and you will make that you will be safe from the repercussions that comes about as a result of the evils that they are committing. You know, we spoke just a moment ago about how evil affects the community. So if you are out there uh, trying to stop the evil, then Allah will protect you from the evil effects of that uh, crime that you have made Nahi munkar against. So last part, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explains, he says, وَمَنْ رَضِيَ بِفِعْلِهِمْ But as for the one who is pleased with their actions, وَتَابَعَهُمْ And he follows them in it, فَهُوَ الْعَصِي لِلَّهِ Then he is a person who disobeys Allah. So in other words, three categories of people. The one who hates it, uh, in his heart the one who physically stops it or verbally stops it or uh, uh, verbally condemns it whatever you want to call it and the third category is the one who is okay with it and follows it then he is an evil sinner and he is equally as guilty as the rest of them that being said that's the end of hadith number 189 and we'll stop on this point here for tonight insha'Allah ta'ala until next time we end and we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh